So I've been trying to slowly add on to this distributed key value storage application I'm building using Go and deploying with Kubernetes. And again, this is just for me to learn more about Kubernetes and Go. And again, this is subject to change as I learn more and more and try to rethink what I'm doing. So this is the current setup that I have uh, with this key value store. Um, let's zoom in on the bottom, right? So a user, when they make a request to my key value store, they can store a value or they can retrieve a value. So as an example, let's do a post request to keys slash hello and notice that it got a 201 created. And then if I show how to get that back, we get that same data. So that's what's happening here. A user makes a request and that gets routed from a load balancer to this primary stateful set over here. Okay, so this is step one. And let me show you how that's kind of set up. I have a load balancer and that is set up to route all traffic to an API primary. So then I have a primary YAML file, which defines a stateful set. It defines a service of API primary. And the stateful set right now has two replicas, has some environment variables, and then it has a persistent volume template. So when I do an apply, it basically will update these things. The reason I have two stateful sets is mainly around fault tolerance, I guess you could say, or failover. Right now, all the traffic is going to the primary set. But if something were to go wrong, what we could potentially do is just route all the traffic to this other passive stateful set, which could start handling the traffic, right? That's the idea. But secondly, it makes deployments a little bit easier because when you deploy a new version of something, for example, let's say I wanted to increase the number of nodes that are in the set. Right now we have replicas of two, which means all the data is split up in between two different block storage devices. But if I were to scale up to four nodes instead of two, what happens is that these two new nodes will come online. Traffic will continue to hit these nodes. These nodes have logic in it to know where to actually look for the keys, right? So not every key is duplicated to every single block storage device. I do like a hash and then I figure out which pod the data needs to live on. So when you post data to this key value store, it figures out where it needs to live and it'll always live on that node. But when you increase the number of nodes, you have to redistribute all your data using some type of redistribute strategy. And so technically the load balancer could be smart enough to like know where the data lives, but I do think this is going to be like a central point of failure at some point. So what I do instead is any request that comes in, I just send it to one of these nodes and then the node itself knows how to forward it requests to other nodes that should have the data. Now, I don't know if this is a good approach, but uh, it's what I'm kind of trying right now. But, but the issue is if you were to, for example, have this be live or active, and then you add two nodes, requests are going to come in and they're going to hit this node. But this node may go back and check this node and say, hey, I need data from you because now I have a different ring distribution hash strategy. But this one could start updating, right? I can go over here. Let's say we deploy like a new version of our Go image. That one starts updating, which means that it is going to be completely down. And this one's going to get a bunch of errors, which means that the user is also going to get errors. So I did add some retry logic in here, but since these can take some time to turn off and turn back on, um, this would sit here waiting for quite a long time and your users would see a, a lag or a delay when making that request. Okay. So the alternative solution to this that I'm trying to set up is basically when you need to deploy a new version or change any type of configuration for your stateful set, I do it on the opposite, right? So I look at what the current one is. So for example, this is currently on primary and I'll go into my secondary configuration here, which is basically a duplicate of the primary. But every new deployment you go through here and you just kind of modify what you think needs to be modified, right? So I can scale this up to four nodes if I want to. And then I could update some configuration so it knows that there's four nodes and it can kind of redistribute the data. I can update the individual versions of the Docker image like that. And then if I were to go ahead and just run and apply, there won't be any downtime because again, we are still hitting the old primary. The current secondary is currently terminating, updating, and deploying the new nodes, but traffic is not affected in any way, right? So that gives me the flexibility to apply updates to this non-active set, but there is an issue with this as well because these nodes, they have to come offline for a short period and then they have to come back online. The issue with this is that if users are writing a bunch of data to these, you need to make sure that that data is propagated or replicated to this other set, right? So this is why I have this event right topic here could be another central point of fa failure. I'm using rabbit MQ for this. So which is probably why people bring in something like Kafka and, and that is going to provide them like a distributed messaging system. But basically every time someone is writing into this primary cluster, 
it sends off an event and it writes it to this queue, or I guess I should say it's a topic. And this topic, all these different nodes just subscribe to this topic and they will write to their own block storage device if the message comes in and the message is meant for their node uh, in general. So right now, as users are writing to this, those are also propagating to our new stateful. Now, let me go to my RabbitMQ dashboard just to kind of demo this, right? So we have these queues and streams set up here. And if I were to just go ahead and turn off the entire um, secondary set here, let's just go down here. I'll say cube control, delete um, stateful set API secondary. So now if I get the pods, you'll see that all these are terminating, right? But again, we have a queue that's replicating all the data. So if I just continue to publish a bunch of messages, at some point, these services which are currently shutting down will no longer receive those messages, but those messages get queued up in RabbitMQ, okay? So you'll see here, all these messages are just sitting here waiting. Um, we got 106 messages just waiting to be consumed. So notice we have a queue, an individual queue for every single secondary node or pod that lives in the stateful set. And if I were to go ahead and bring it back online, so just, I don't know, I'll do like an apply here. As these nodes come online, you'll see it start to consume from these queues. All the data that was written to the primary set gets replicated to the secondary sets, which means all the data will be living in the, the correct node at this point. Now there is a part to this process that I haven't yet implemented yet, which I need to figure out. There is a bunch of old data that isn't being written to that lives on these block storage devices, right? And we have to somehow get that data over to the new set. And this old data really only needs to get moved over during like a redistribution. If I were to have a primary and secondary and all this writes are being replicated, then you wouldn't have to worry about like going back and looking at all the old data and getting that migrated to the new set. But during a redistribution, I have two new nodes. They have absolutely no data on them. And I need to figure out how to get old data from these nodes moved over to these nodes. Now, what I plan to do for this process is basically add another topic, which both the primary and secondary would have their own like redistribute topic. And they're gonna listen for a redistribute event. So when this event comes in, maybe it's a manual process that kicks us off or something else. Basically that's going to broadcast to both of these nodes. These nodes are gonna get that event that says they need to redistribute their data. And I think what I'm gonna do is just run through, like loop through every single piece of data that's on this block storage device and just re-trigger a write event to this event queue. Because I already have it all set up so that when this write happens, it gets redistributed to the correct node. Um, so that might be the easiest path forward, probably not the most performant because we are writing the same data to all of these nodes. So another approach I may have to consider is you may need to have some type of metadata table, which keeps track of where the data lives. So what that kind of allows me to do is I have a list of all the keys where they currently live. And then I can just recompute the hash based on the settings of the stateful set that we're deploying. And then just say, hey, if it used to live on API secondary one, but now it needs to live on API secondary three, I have that key. And I could just go ahead and say like, you know what, just write that key to this write topic. And then that'll just go ahead and redistribute the data. Um, as needed. Now there's also the case where like all the old data is going to stick around on the old block storage device. So I need to think about that as well. And maybe I could just make a different type of topic here so that when an event comes in to redistribute key X, it'll write it from zero to three, and then it'll go ahead and delete it from this once that write has been acknowledged. So those are some of the things that I've been trying to think about. Now, again, the reason I'm doing all this is to learn more, right? I want to dive into more advanced topics of this industry, which I just haven't had the opportunity to get exposed to in my career. Most of the times you're going to use pre-existing solutions. Like for example, a key value store, you're going to use Redis. You're going to just go ahead and use a, a managed service for Redis that probably does all this scaling behind the scenes as a couple of Redis nodes set up. It has the cluster already set up. And often you never need to worry about like, how do you set up a distributed key value store with durability in case one of these nodes were to crash so that it can restart and get all that data back or resilience in case one of these nodes goes down, you can shift traffic from the primary to the secondary. For example, consistency is another topic I'm trying to learn more about because how do you ensure that if a user were to write some data and then do a get request directly after that they're gonna get the latest greatest value. And um, these are things that I've been kind of exploring. Like for example, the consistency, what I did is we already know that the data has to live on one node and only ever one node. 
So I have this locking package, which basically locks a key. It does like an exclusive lock on the key that we're trying to store for the key values. And no one can ever read or write from the same lock until a write is done performing, okay? So if two requests come in, one's a write and one's a get, I go ahead and put a lock so that the write can finish writing. And then I unlock that lock. And then later the get will have access to read from that same key. Um, and I do like a read lock on that. And the way you can do that in Go is there's something called mutexes. Um, so let's go to this locking package. And basically I just have this like struct that has a key value map of locks. And for every key, I have its own mutex here, a read write mutex. And so if you need to acquire a lock on a key, you just basically say, okay, give me a read lock or give me a, a write lock. And then later on, if you need to unlock it, you just call unlock or R lock. So that's my hacky solution of basically ensuring that only one write slash read can happen from a key at a time. Is that the most performance solution? I don't know. I probably could use a queue as well. Um, but that's what I currently have set up. So I'm going to keep playing around with this. Maybe try to implement step four, which is like I need to loop through all the existing data and redistribute it. And I'll probably make a video when I get that implemented. I hope you guys enjoyed watching and uh, you guys are learning some new stuff. Um, I'm definitely learning some new stuff along the way. Other than that, have a good day. Happy coding.